Hello, today I'm going to be going over the Trihackme Room Mal Strings. It's part of the Cyber Defense Pathway. Just as kind of a, a warning, this is more going to be a demonstration than an explanation, so I'm not going to go through all of this text here. I'm just going to kind of give a brief overview on it, as I don't want to waste anybody's time. Um, so let's just hop right into it. What are strings? Best way to put it is it's a term given for data handled by an application. However, I like to think of strings as text, and they have a good example here of usernames and passwords being a representation of the many types of information that are stored as a string. I think thinking of it as text is easiest, um, but just know that it is the term given for data handled by an application. And on to the next one, why are they important? They're important because developers will sometimes leave strings that give sensitive information inside of their code. Um, either they're lazy or they just leave it in there by accident. That's what this kind of goes over. And it also gives a specific example where that happened, where they left the default passcode of 12345678 inside of their application. Anyway, going down to the questions, these require a bit of research. I'm going to do that research now so you guys can see, but it's really just Googling. Uh, the first one is, what is the name of the account that had the passcode of 12345678 in the Intellian example discussed above? So if I was to go about this in the real world, I'd probably say something like um, Intellian default password. Uh, da, 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 for the Intellian account, and it actually gives us a CSV here. It wants the name of the account, and it says Intellian account here. So, Intellian. All right, what is the CVE entry disclosed by the company Teradata in their viewpoint application that has a password within a string? So we have a few key terms here, Teradata and viewpoint application. So, Teradata viewpoint application is what I'll do. CVE entry. So let's see if this is the right one. It is. Cool. According to OWASP's list of top 10 IoT vulnerabilities, name the ranking this vulnerability would fall within represented as text. I th off the top of my head, I think it's one, but if you wanted to find this out, you just do OWASP top 10. I'm just clicking the first link because it's right there. It seems easiest. Um, so that doesn't give us kind of a, we just want an OWASP top 10 list. Da, 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 da. Let's see. What well, says injection here? But I'm pretty sure it's yeah, it's one. The room might be out of date. They might have updated it since then. What was this room made? It's 812 days old. So it could be that this is just out of date. Um, because it looks like injection is actually number one according to Veracode.com. I'm, again, I'm just doing this very quickly, just trying to get this demonstration done. If you were working and you really needed an answer, you'd do more of a deep dive. So let's go ahead on to task number two, which is extracting strings from an application. And this one allows you to download task files. I'm going to use the attack box to do it. So I'm going to sign into my Try Hack Me account on the attack box. And I'm going to download the task files there just because I don't want them on my actual computer. Alrighty. So I'm going to go ahead and view that in full screen and exit the split view. And I'm going to allow that. I'll try hacking to see what we're doing on the clipboard. I'm going to sign in. And I'm going to download the task files and I'm just going to save the file. I'm going to open the container folder as well.
And there it is. So let's take a look at what it wants us to do. Okay, it says if you're if you were to execute this on Windows, you'd be greeted with this prompt. Um, we don't know what the credentials are. It wants us to take a look into the application itself. Um, load up a terminal and use this command. Replacing yep. Okay, so it wants us to boot up a terminal, and it wants us to run the strings command on the login form. I just did an ls so I can see what's inside the directory and see that login form is right there. So I don't have to go and actually put this in. I just need to do strings login form dot exe. And we will get this long, long list back. Yep, you'll see a lot of text appear and might be cut and might be cut things out. Okay, looks like uh, rather than just printing the output to the terminal, perhaps we should save it to a file so we could pipe it or direct it to a text file. So for example, we could do the same exact command we just did, do the greater than sign, and then maybe just like make it login.txt. And if we go and look here, we'll see that login.txt was created. And if we open that up, it's going to be the same exact thing as what was in the terminal. Okay, it wants us to filter it. Um, it seems like it wants us to open a text editor either via the terminal or from there, but I don't think we would really need to do that. If we just double click it, it opens it just fine. So I don't see why we would need to use those. But if you want to follow it um, to the T, you could open it by doing going back to the terminal and doing ls to see what's inside here. We can see that the login.txt is there. You could do nano login.txt and then. Ah, I put a lowercase l. You needed the capital L. It does the same exact thing. As you can see, either opening it normally or opening it via nano or vi, it does the same exact thing. I prefer doing it in maybe like the text application. So I'm going to look through here and see what we have to do. What looks most likely a username and password? So let's look through this. Um... probably this I mean there's a flag here so I assume that it's probably gonna be nearby we have the login portal right here with the entering the username and password so this seems to be completely different from everything around it so I think I don't know how you'd say that um, yep but that's the the correct username and what is the required password probably the the line right below it i'm going to copy and paste oh it actually works cool and then what is the hidden flag you're right it's not so hidden it's just right there but again this is just a quick demonstration of looking at what strings does um, and it picks out all the strings from that program i don't think i actually mentioned what it did earlier i just hopped right into it but again this was supposed to be more of a demonstration than an explanation anyway so i think that goes along with it anyway let's continue uh, strings in the context of malware um, they talk about how developers can be lazy, um, that in telling an example earlier showed us that even professional developers can slip up. Um, but it talks about how botnets and ransomware rely upon information stored within strings, such as IP addresses to their command and control servers. And they give a famous example here, which is the WannaCry ransomware and they mention that in other rooms as well yeah it just kind of gives a uh, general information uh, read this in more detail but we're going to go ahead to the questions what is the key term to describe a server that botnets receive instructions from that's a command and control server um, but it looks like it only has enough for command and control yep and name the discussed example malware that uses strings to store the bitcoin wallet addresses for payment the only one they talk about is wanna cry so that would be the answer there as well. 
let's go ahead and take a look at the practical. I'm going to start the machine, and while that's booting up, we're going to go through and take a look here. Um, it talks about what Bitcoin is. It's an anonymous online payment currency, and it talks about how WannaCry uses Bitcoin as the payment method. Um, and it gives an example of what that Bitcoin address is, and you can actually click this link and go to it. It talks about how much money that they've received over time as of this date. And it gives us this website, BlockCypher, to explore the Bitcoin network and transactions between wallets. I'm going to go ahead and open that up because we'll need it in the next task. I'm opening that on the virtual machine. Um, the practical, we can log into it via RDP, uh, which we will do in 10 seconds. And it wants us to open the sysinternals folder located on the desktop as well. And let's see what it wants us to do. It wants us to CD into the sysinternals directory and run strings.exe and accept the license. And then after that, we will be able to use strings to get all the strings from the complex calculator v2 executable and it looks like it wants us to pipe it into strings.txt which we'll look through to find this okay it looks like it's up so let's go ahead and rdb in and in order to do that we will use Ramina click cancel on that go up here put that in administrator and try hack me one two three I think the domain was mouse strings and connect accept the certificate so now that we got that up um, I'm gonna go ahead and answer this question list the number of total transactions that the Bitcoin wallet used by the WannaCry authors okay uh, I'm just going to actually I'm gonna just copy link address go back here Oh, it actually goes straight to it. So we'll just put that in there. Enter. And we can see that they have had a total of 143 transactions. So 143. And was the Bitcoin address stored within Complex Calculator? Um, we have to go to the RDP virtual machine. We're going to have to open a command prompt and I believe it wanted us to CD in, right? Yep. Okay, and once we're in, we're going to open a command prompt and we're going to CD to where this is, which is on the desktop. So CD desktop. Uh, its full name is Sys Internal Suite. So CD SYS Internals Suite. And I believe we are just going to run strings.exe. That is correct. No, strings.exe. And once it loads up, we will accept the agreement. Agree. Okay. And now we are going to find complex calculator v2. Okay. And I'm just going to copy and paste this command. All right. And so that will have put a text document into the folder. Let me go back real quick just to kind of explain what we did there. I briefly went over it, but we did strings.exe to run the strings command, and we did it for complex calculator v2.exe, which is inside of the sysinternal suite folder. So we didn't have to actually specify the entire path because we're already inside of that directory. And we piped it to strings.txt. So when we open that sysinternal suite, we can see that it's right here and if you want to know how I went down so fast if you're in Windows and you're in the file explorer you can just click the first letter of where you want to go in this case I did ST and it pulled me here and so let's go ahead and open that up and we have to find the Bitcoin address um, and it looks like just judging from the scroll bar here we have a lot to do so we are going to filter so I'm going to do a control F to find 
and I'm going to see if it's nearby Bitcoin. That looks like a Bitcoin wallet address right there. We're going to do control C, control V and submit. And that's the answer there. And we're going to look at the summary, which is a recap. It's just a recap. Um, so I'm not going to go over it. What is the name of the tool set provided by Microsoft that allows you to extract the strings of an application? Um, what is the name of the tool set? So sys internals suite, maybe sys internals. Yep. And what operator would you use to pipe or store the output of the strings command? That would be that. And what is the name of the currency that ransomware often uses? That is Bitcoin. And we did it. I hope that you guys enjoyed. If you have any um, rooms that you want me to take a look at and do, just let me know. Have a good one.